Here we're going to look at a nice number theory problem that was featured on the team selection test for Saudi Arabia. Okay, let's look at the statement. Our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that 3 to the n plus 4 to the n plus 5 to the n stopping at n plus 2 to the n is the same thing as n plus 3 to the n. So as with a lot of these types of problems where you're seemingly solving an equation over natural numbers, the first step is usually to do some exploration for low values of n. That can usually give you a nice quick guess for what the solution is. So I'm actually going to do that off camera because doing that arithmetic is not super interesting. So let's put our exploration right here. Okay, so here's the calculation that we came up with. So the n equals 1 case does not work. The n equals 2 and 3 cases are good. And so that's because we've got a nice Pythagorean triple here for the n equals 2 case. And then we've got this nice thing involving the cube of 6 for the n equals 3 case. Next, if we set n equal to 4, this doesn't work. Notice we have the left-hand side is smaller than the right-hand side. Now you could continue doing examples to be a little bit more careful at your guess, but what you will find is that from here on, it seems like the left-hand side is always less than the right-hand side. But if the left-hand side is always less than the right-hand side, that means there are no solutions after n equals 4, leaving us with only two solutions, n equals 2 and n equals 3. So just to summarize that, we can finish this off if we prove the following claim. So for all n bigger than or equal to 4, we have the following inequality, 3 to the n plus 4 to the n, all the way up to n plus 2 to the n is strictly bigger than n plus 3 to the n. So how can we prove that? Well, there's probably a lot of ways to prove it, but we're going to prove it with induction. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. Notice that our base case is done. And this is pretty typical. Whenever you're looking at one of these contest problems where you're solving over natural numbers and doing exploration at the beginning, often that exploration will give you your base case. The base case in this case is n equals 4 because we're proving it for all n bigger than or equal to 4. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So that means we want to suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 4, we have this statement holding. So we've got 3 to the k plus 4 to the k plus all the way up to k plus 2 to the k is less than, sorry, this should have been less than k plus 3 to the k. Now we want to consider the next case. Now, obviously, we're going to have to build from one side of our proposed inequality to the other. So we'll build from the left-hand side. So that means we want to look at 3 to the k plus 1 plus 4 to the k plus 1 all the way up to k plus 2 to the k plus 1 and k plus 3 to the k plus 1. And then we want to force something bigger than that that will take the form k plus 4 to the k plus 1 somehow. Now how can we do that? Well we probably want to use our induction hypothesis which, which will involve these first terms which, I, which I've bracketed in orange. Well since we can work with an inequality here I may as well start pushing this larger already. So what I'll do is take each of these numbers, 3 to the k plus 1, 4 to the k plus 1, factor a 3 or a 4 or a 5 out as needed, and then replace that 3 with a k plus 2. So let's maybe do a little example of what's going on over here. So for example, we're taking 3 to the k plus 1, we're writing it as 3 times 3 to the k, we're saying that's less than k plus 2 times 3 to the k. But we're going to do that for all of these summands. So that means in the end, this object is less than k plus 2 times 3 to the k plus k plus 2 times 4 to the k 
all the way up to k plus 2 times k plus 2 to the k, and then we've got this extra term k plus 3 to the k plus 1. And then let's bracket this again in orange to see where it came from. Now we can take a k plus 2 out of this, kind of obviously. That's going to be equal to k plus 2 times this sum, 3 to the k, all the way up to k plus 2 to the k, and then plus k plus 3 to the k plus 1. But we can now apply our induction hypothesis. So notice our induction hypothesis says that all of this is less than this k plus 3 to the k. So that means I can rewrite this with an inequality as k plus 2 times k plus 3 to the k plus k plus 3 to the k plus 1. Now I can take a greatest common factor out of that. The greatest common factor will be k plus 3 to the k. That's going to leave me with k plus 2 plus k plus 3. So that'll be 2k plus 5. Because we have k plus k is 2k, 2 plus 3 is 5. But that's actually a little bit tricky to work with. So what I want to do instead is replace this 5 with a 6. And replacing that 5 with a 6 will give me an inequality here instead of an equality. So maybe why would we replace the 5 with a 6? Because now we can factor a 2 out and combine it with this k plus 3 term. So let's do that. Now this thing is equal to 2 times k plus 3 to the k plus 1. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Our would-be goal object for our induction step is less than that 2 times k plus 3 to the k plus 1. So let's maybe summarize that at the top and then we'll finish this off. So in the last board, we determined that 3 to the k plus 1 added up all the way to k plus 3 to the k plus 1 is less than 2 times k plus 3 to the k plus 1. Now what would finish this proof off is if we could show that this object was less than k plus 4 to the k plus 1. And that would build an inequality like this one up here for k plus 1, assuming that inequality for k. In other words, it will finish our inductive argument. So now we're just going to focus on proving this last inequality here. So let's maybe see how we can do that. That's going to be the same thing, so I'll just put if and only if. Maybe I'll put a little blue thing over this to say that this is if and only if our final inequality. We have k plus 4 over k plus 3 to the power of k plus 1 is bigger than 2. Again, that's maybe just by dividing this k plus 3 to the k plus 1 over. But now we're going to take this and simplify this inside a little bit with like a polynomial division with remainder thing. So this inequality is equivalent to 1 plus 1 over k plus 3 to the k plus 1 being bigger than 2. Again, that's because if you combine these together, you get k plus 4 over k plus 3. That's kind of obvious. Now from here, we'll do a binomial expansion. So let's write that down. So binomial expansion, keeping only a few terms. Then if those few terms are bigger than two, that means the entire thing is bigger than two. So let's see, for a binomial expansion, we'll have one to the k plus one, that's just one, plus k plus one, choose one, times one over k plus three to the first power, plus k plus 1 choose 2 times 1 over k plus 3 squared. So that's the first three terms of the binomial expansion. And if this is bigger than 2, then our goal object is bigger than 2 because our goal object is clearly bigger than this. Okay, so let's maybe put an if and only if here to say that that's what we're working with now. But we can do a little bit of simplification. This 1 can go over here and scrub this down to a 1. 
And then we can also multiply both sides by k plus 3 squared to like clear the denominators. That's going to leave us with k plus 1 here times k plus 3. So the k plus 1 comes from k plus 1 choose 1. Then we multiplied by k plus 3 squared. And then here we're going to have k times k plus 1 over 2. That's k plus 1 choose 2 is bigger than k plus 3 quantity squared, like that. But now there's just like some symbolic arithmetic, and I'll let you guys check that this polynomial inequality is equivalent to the polynomial inequality k minus 4 times k plus 3 is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, so given that, this is going to be always true um, if k is bigger than 4. But our setup is that k is bigger than 4 anyway, so that means we're good to go here. And so just to reiterate, that implies our goal inequality up here, which finishes the proof of this claim, which means there's no solutions after n equals 4, meaning n equals 2 and n equals 3 are our only solutions. And that's a good place to stop.